Allie Matthews has won nine Gospel Music Association Covenant Awards, earning 19 nominations in five years. In 2006, she was the winner of the International Songwriting Competition, the Canadian Songwriting Competition, and the Word Guild Writers Award for Song Lyrics two years in a row. I think at that point she stepped down to become a judge to give somebody else a chance. Allie, come on in here and let's, let's get to know you. Hey. We've been fans. Well, I just discovered we've been fans of Allie Matthews since your mother ran out into the parking That's lot right. after one of your concerts Aww. where our producer George McEachern was. That's Have you right. heard my daughter's That's music? That's right. She handed him a CD and yeah, she's she's my biggest fan and biggest supporter and uh, it worked cuz George uh, George You've became a fan as well. Since. Exactly. Yeah. So no, I love coming back here. It's a, I'm a fan of yours as well. So. Well, a thrill to discover that uh, you studied English and drama. That's right. At the University of Western That's Ontario. Right. I guess I always like being in the spotlight. Well, you know, <laughs> we think this just hatches, and and yeah. you had to do the time. You know that book Outliers talks about ten thousand hours yeah. invested to become yeah. really to excel at something, and you you had to study your craft. Absolutely. A, a lot of times, I think people think that songwriting is kind of this magical thing where you know the angels descend and drop this gift in your lap. Sometimes it, it is a little bit like that, but most of the time it's like anything else. It's just hard work, and you need to keep working at it. And for every, for every good song, you know, you're going to write 30 bad songs. So it's, it is like anything else. It's, it's hard work, but uh, such a blessing to, um, to be able to do it at, for, you know, as, as a, a job and a living. I just uh, I pinch myself that I get to to do this. And so it's not just Christian ministry. You've garnered praise and, and attention from mainstream music. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, and I'm, that's something that's really important to me because really through my music, I don't want to, um, to necessarily preach at people. I think there are people who, who uh, do a good job of preaching and my music is, is a lot more subtle, really. It's just, uh, you know, it's kind of like there's leading the horse to water and my music isn't really that. My music is more like the salt that makes the horse thirsty and want to seek out water. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit more subtle and just uh, my desire is to connect with people. Um, people who are hurting especially, I think that's sort of what's, what's happened um, as my writing has developed over the years. I've seen the powerful uh, impact of, of music on people, that it transcends my own understanding of, of music. You know, I can write a song and think, oh, this is, maybe people will like this, but it's, it's what God does with that song and how he can reach into people's hearts and just comfort them mm -hmm. and sometimes just encourage them. And, uh, and that's beyond what I do. So I'm just so, you know, fortunate that, that uh, I get to be the one to, to deliver that, that well, comfort. Before this was honed into what is always identified as music that touches the soul coming mm -hmm. from you. You were being nurtured in music and a love of music Absolutely. at the camp I passed last weekend, yes, Minioe. Camp Minioe, yeah. Up north toward Huntsville. Yeah, I, uh, I think music is, is really the way that God, you know, found me. He, he finds different people in different ways. And as a child, I was really fortunate to, I went to a Christian school. I went uh, to uh, this wonderful Christian camp and music was such a big part of that. And it was, it was the songs of the faith that, um, and the hymns. I mean, I, I, I went to a very traditional uh, church where we didn't, we didn't sing with, even with a piano or an organ, it was just voices and, mm -hmm. um, and you would I get harmonies and things. I like learned that. harmony that, that way, and uh, and I just learned a real love for for those old hymns and the words of the hymns, and uh, and I think that really is how how God found me. And and you know when I look back over those years, I really think that was it was leading me to the place where I am now, which is a professional songwriter. So I never would have thought that you know if you if you'd asked me when I was a, a kid. You know, do you think you'll be a songwriter? I, I wouldn't have known that, but I just fell in love with music, and um, that's really, you know, how God found me. I think so. And, and yet, from your own lips, and this, I, I had to read it twice. Did she say that? Your first good song hmm. came quite a ways down the road in this love yeah. of music, out of personal tragedy. Yeah. Your your first tragedy in life. Absolutely. I hadn't really had uh, experienced anything 
any loss or any, any uh, permanent kind of uh, tragedy or, or loss until, um, until I lost my father 10 years ago. Uh, and it is, you know, it's a, it's a natural thing to lose your parents. It's not, I, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't call that a tragedy loosely because I know there are people, you know, people who lose their children and they lose their spouse and they go through terrible tragedies, those, those unexpected things. And, uh, and, you know, losing a parent is something we do expect to happen. But I just, it blew me over to lose my dad because he was young. He was, um, he was so vital in the Christian community. He was just a, an incredible, gentle, kind, giving, important man of God. And he was doing so much in, in the Christian community. He was a preacher. He was, he was a lawyer who did so much work for for Christian organizations. Didn't he did he work he, for us? He worked for Crossroads. He, he worked with Billy Graham Association and he was on the board of World Vision for years and just did, did he so. He established the four C's you were telling that's me right, in Canada. That's right, the four C's and many, many um, charities and. Canadian Christian. Ca Council of Christian Council Charities. Council of Christian Charities. That's right, yeah. He did, and, and he did that in such a humble, um, loving way. And he really was a wise, wise man. People went to him for counsel. And, uh, and he was just such an incredible father and an Tell incredible... Tell name and I want Len folks Brown. to Len see Brown was his how name. handsome this man is. <laughs> we have some pictures of, of Len. Yeah. Um, he, um, and just an incredible husband uh, to my mom. Like they were uh, such a wonderful... What a legacy they, they left us, you know, their, um, their marriage. So, you know, when he got sick with cancer, I thought, well, God wouldn't do that. He wouldn't take him. You know, he's, uh, he's, he's far too valuable. You know, God can take some criminal who's rotting away in jail, you know. And, and I honestly didn't believe that my dad would die. I thought, no, he's, he's, uh, he's too valuable and he's doing too much. And when he died, it really, it really did. Uh, it was one of those big why moments for me, those big God, why? I don't get it. I don't get why you took him. And it was really the first moment that I ever had in my life of questioning God and uh, wondering, you know, asking him, why did you do this? And, and um, it didn't make any sense. And you know what, 10 years later, it still doesn't make any sense to me. But the thing that I've learned through, through all of this is that God doesn't ask us to understand his ways. He doesn't say, you know, figure me out. You know, he just says, you know, trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, you know, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. So he asks us to trust and to acknowledge, not to figure him out. So um, really that was, it was a great life lesson for me. And uh, was it a process, Allie? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is the kind of thing the things that seem unfair and don't make any yeah. sense and leave you so bereft are, 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 well, they have the potential of leaving you in a place where your faith is derailed. Mm -hmm. You lose your faith or you become bitter mm -hmm. toward God. 